visible and I am live right now. Just give a confirmation by typing yes in the live chat or giving a like to this video. I will in the meantime also check uh, in my mobile whether everything is working fine or not. So welcome, welcome uh, Dr. Hamal Vithani. A very warm welcome. Uh, so just whoever is watching if I'm visible and audible so I can see in my mobile that both my voice and also video are working fine. So welcome back friends. Come on every day we are having these sessions at 10 o'clock. So I hope all of you are well aware of this. Uh, every day we are looking at the, the topics. So I have already shared the schedule with all of you. Uh, this is these are the dates and these are the topics basics adnex and appendages hair nails pigmentation allergic disorders dermatitis are already completed so you can watch out all the previous videos by just uh, going into the description you can check out the playlist and in that playlist all of the uh, videos are available today we are going to look at papillosquamous disorders for those students who are not aware so we are going to see at 10 no o'clock every day for a period of 10 minutes, uh, just 10 minutes. So myself, Dr. Majrin Srinivas will be uh, showing you some of the important questions and you need to answer them in the chat section for, uh, by <coughs> followed by the question number. And at the, you will understand what are the mistakes which you are making at the end, uh, uh, immediately after the question is uh, completed, I will post I will tell you what is the answer and after all the questions are completed, we will go and move on to the explanations part. And what is the mission and vision of me doing this is basically to help all the PG students who are PG preparing as well as the post graduates in dermatology also. Uh, in future videos are going to come in a detailed explanatory fashion about all the individual skin diseases. And I want to make uh, this channel has a one-stop source for all the Dharma related queries, whichever the pre-PG or the postgraduate students are having. And yes, the previous year questions are very, very, very important in this aspect. So, INSET November 2021 and also FMG December 2021. So, all these questions were discussed and links you can check out in the description. They are there. A little bit of mercy makes the world less cold and more just. Okay, so this uh, was told by uh, Pope Francis and I have made a small tweak with this. So a little bit of consistent smart work makes the subject less confusing and more easy. So uh, this is, we can say, a small variation for the preparation for all the students who are preparing. So you can uh, follow this uh, norm and you should always think that I can do it. This should be your attitude. And the quiz will be 10 to 15 minutes and yes, at the end, I will try to answer all of the explanations. So brief explanations and if you wish to get the down, uh, downloadable PDF link, then there is, uh, you know, small criteria. Just help me get this video 20 likes or at least in the comment section, in the comment section after the video is posted live, uh, in the comment section type. PDF. So if either of this, if I get at least five requests of the PDF or 20 likes for this video, I will post the PDF of this particular file in the telegram group. So I am also having a telegram group for completely dermatology purpose. So you can check out the link in the description. The link is there in the description. You can check that out and you can join it. And yes, we are going to have the timer start and you are going to have for every question because these are lengthy questions take 50 seconds for each question and try to post your answer within that time period so your time has already started this is question number one so one followed by whatever option you feel is the answer you have to post and comment that in the chat so as a first year derma resident, you see a patient with the following skin lesion. So just imagine you have written the PG exam. You have also entered and if in case you are uh, interested in dermatology, you are already a derma resident. Which of the following disorders is the least likely to present in this fashion? 
so i got ankit shrivastav and pragna choudhary uh, giving me the answer as option d and the timer is up excellent excellent friends so you have marked it right where is the marker here so you have marked it right the answer is basal cell carcinoma very good and this is the second question second question please try to answer this question so this is we can say a warm up which is happening here right now very good vasu v vasu v you have also marked the right answer so this is question number 2 a patient presented with the following itchy lesion to the outpatient department what is the diagnosis lichen planus psoriasis prp uh, is the word which we, uh, is used in the options in few of the options pteriasis rubra pilaris is the full form of prp okay and pteriasis rosea so out of the given options what do you think is the answer for this yes come on Uh, and one small request uh, please friends so write down the question number so it is 2 here followed by the option which or you feel is the answer okay so i am getting option a as the answer as i have already told you this is a warm up so picture abhi baki hai and uh, yes very good lichen planus is the right answer very good this is uh, your question number 3 So, as a first-year derma resident, you see a patient with the following findings. Which of the following disorders is the most likely to present in this form? So, briefly, uh, I will try to tell you what uh, you are able to see in this picture. So, you are able to see some uh, violaceous uh, plaques, papules present over the wrist, that is flexor area, and you are also able to see scarring alopecia. over the scalp and you are able to see some lacy network like pattern which is called as wickham strain and over the nails you are able to see longitudinal ridges longitudinal ridges so all of this put together i hope you all uh, would have already answered this so i am getting 3 as option d very very good excellent friends so pragna choudhary hamod and ankit all of you are absolutely correct so this uh, is the question number 4 again 50 seconds so 30 year old female presents with subtle fine reticulated lacy white papules over the vulva and the following cutaneous finding most appropriate treatment strategy for this so what do you think is the treatment strategy which is most appropriate among the given options so question number 4 uh, i got answer from dr ankit shrivastav as option a so others also come on uh, topical steroids interference puva or methotrexate what do you think is the answer very good vasundhra pragna choudhary okay you have uh, come up with the correct answer hamod please uh, make a note of this the answer here is uh, topical steroids okay topical steroids this is a case of lichen planus and topical steroids is the most appropriate treatment here and this is question number 5 and yes your time starts now which of the following is not true about lichen nitidus lichen nitidus and i hope you all know that this concept was asked in the inct exam also so if in case you ha have not yet watched this inct recall session which i have made the link uh, i will put it in the description and also in the first comment and also in the i card i will try to keep that uh recall session video so the options are presents with tiny pinhead sized papules on the forearms and even you should remember even they can be present over the penis also and option b is most commonly seen in elderly individuals kobner's phenomenon is seen as option c mucous membrane lesions are rare option d so what do you think is the answer for this so i got uh, mixed uh, answers a b c all the options are being uh, marked so let us give some more time 60 seconds will keep because you are reading this uh, i think it's little bit lengthy okay the time is up so the answer here is option b so option b is a wrong statement uh, it is not seen commonly in elderly but it is seen commonly in childhood in children okay yes uh, this is fine yeah this is uh, your question number 6 and your time starts now a patient on regular follow up for a derma condition presents with the following finding which of the following conditions is most likely associated with it 
so you are able to see some erythematous lesions erythematous lesions are there and surrounding this erythematous lesion you are able to see some hypopigmentation and i will give you a, a clue also this is called as worn off ring this is called as worn off ring and you should answer in which of the following disorders which are mentioned in the options do you see worn off ring lichen planus psoriasis pityriasis urbopilaris or pityriasis rosea so question number 6 i am getting uh, mixed answers again so a b d are the options which i got so very good sanjya you have answered it right it is option b which is psoriasis psoriasis in which we can see this worn off ring this is the question number 7 so uh, take your own time so i will vanish okay because i think i am coming in the way so take 60 seconds a 40 year old man presents to the derma opd with the following finding these lesions were insidious in onset diagnosis of pityriasis rubra pilaris was made which of the following features is least likely to be found in this patient that is in this patient who is having who is diagnosed with pityriasis rubra pilaris so this much big question instead of this the examiner can give which of the following is not seen in prp so this is a new trend which is going on uh, and the options are salmon red color dry scaly plaques islands of sparing herald patch nutmeg greater papule so what do you think is the answer for this question number 7 so i got uh, option c option b option c option c okay the time 5 seconds are there 5 seconds are left and the time is up and okay very good those who answered it as herald patch okay so option c is the answer that is the least likely finding in this petra superpellers is herald patch yes now we'll move on to question number 8 and here is your timer again started a 34 year old male presents with the silvery white scaly plaques on the extensor aspect of the elbows and knees which are the following clinical tests will aid in the diagnosis so you should read the question very carefully it is asking about clinical test which will help in the diagnosis of this condition first you should understand what is the diagnosis uh, which about which the examiner is asking you and then you should know what is the clinical test so two steps question number 8 uh, i got uh, option b as the answer from sanjay and vasundara and uh, ankit says it is option d hamod says option b mbrl says it is option b which should be the right answer and the time is up okay we will have 50 seconds that will be more than sufficient and yes the answer here is gratage test gratage test okay so this is your question number 9 and uh, we shall have 30 seconds for this question because this is a memory based question which of the following drugs is not responsible for exacerbation of psoriasis is it ace inhibitors is it beta blockers is it lithium or is it levothyroxine uh yes question number 9 what do you think is the answer for this 30 seconds are running out so is there any difficulty in this so okay i can see option b as the answer okay so i think you uh, have not heard those who are answering differently i think you have not heard of the mnemonic so yeah time is up and the answer for this question is option d okay i will tell the mnemonic while we are discussing the explanatory part so i don't want to uh, disturb the flow so this is question number 10 wrong about histopathological examination of psoriasis so histopath of psoriasis lichen planus Uh, these are very very important and most expected uh, questions so you should have an idea about this is it option a epidermal thickening is it option b supra papillary thinning is it option c cogoj spongy form pustules or is it option d potrier's micro abscess which of the following is wrongly mentioned in the options which is unrelated to psoriasis so that is the one which you need to identify odd man out out of the following options so yes come on by uh, guys so question number 10 what do you think is the answer 
MVRL says option D. Yes, this should be at your fingertips. Okay. Uh, Basundra says option C. A C E says option D. Sanjaya uh, and Hamod says option D. Very good. Very good. So a uh, little bit uh, we, we can say difficult if you do not uh, know the trick. Okay. Otherwise, it is very simple. It is option D, Potter's microapsis, which is odd man out in this case. Okay, this is question number 11. Which of the following site is least likely to be involved in psoriasis vulgaris, which is also called as chronic plaque psoriasis? Yes, friends, come on. Question number 11. What do you think is the answer for this? Is it axilla? Is it gluteal cleft? Is it lower back or is it elbows and knees? And uh, basically to uh, answer this question, you should know they, that there are many types of psoriasis. Okay, many types of psoriasis out of which psoriasis vulgaris is the most common variety. In fact, there are other ones like gutted psoriasis, inverse psoriasis, okay, scalp psoriasis, nail psoriasis. So I hope you have got the clue which I have already told you, uttered. So yes, the time is up. <clears throat> and uh, 11th question, I got A as the answer. Maximum, yes, it is option A, which is axilla, which is the least likely site among the given options. Okay. Yes, now please try to answer this question again. Uh, we are going to have 50 seconds. Which type of psoriasis is usually preceded by an attack of beta hemolytic streptococcal tonsillitis? Is it inverse psoriasis or is it pustular psoriasis or is it gutted psoriasis or is it chronic block psoriasis? Question number 12. So these kind of questions you should, uh, you know, have them at your fingertips. So usually this will be seen in children. So I got uh, option C as the answer uh, from Sanjaya, Pregna and Vasundra. And uh, yes, other students who are uh, watching this, kindly do mention whatever you feel is the answer for this. The time is up and yes, very good. Those who have answered it as option C, gutted psoriasis. It is the right answer. Now, please try to answer question number 13. So, we will have 30 seconds for this drug of choice for psoriatic arthritis. Among the given options, is it methotrexate, is it PUVA or is it steroids or is it infliximab? So what do you want to give this patient who is coming to you with psoriatic arthritis, which is most of the times asymmetrical oligoarthritis in which distal interphalangeal joint involvement is the most characteristic finding. So a few points I am trying to cover while you are answering because this is a memory based concept. So the time is up 30 seconds. So drug of choice. Uh, what did the students answer? Question number 13. A, A, A. Very good. Excellent. So it is diadrofolate reductase inhibitor method uh, Trexit, which is the answer here. And this is question number 14. So your time starts now. Which of the following is the only definitive indication for giving steroids in psoriasis? Is it impetic performance? Is it severe arthritis? Is it gutted psoriasis? Or is it erythrodermic psoriasis? This is, a, a, I can say, very, very, very important MCQ. Most likely, again, it may be repeated in the NEET exam also. So, you need to know uh, different varieties of psoriasis out of which impetic hopatiformis is one among them. Okay. Very peculiar name. It is not a bacterial infection. It is not a viral infection. Neither a bacterial nor a viral infection. But still, it has got impetic hopatiformis in its name. And what do you think is the answer for this question number 14? in which we are going to give steroids to the patients of psoriasis. Uh, so, yes, I got the answer as majority students are telling me as option A. Very good. It is impetic hopatiformis, which is the answer here. Okay. So, yes, this question, Gokarma and Regimen is used for. So, this question will have 20 seconds. So, if you know, you can answer. If you don't know, you can't answer. Is it paraneoplastic femphigus? Is it psoriasis? Is it lichen planus? Is it eczema? What do you think is the answer for this question? So most likely you, you might already guess, uh, you might be guessing if you have not heard about this, since it's a papillosquamous disorder which you are discussing, it should be either psoriasis or lichen planus. So, tukka maanne ka try kar lena. 50% chances hai 
जो भी मार्क करोगे वो करेक्ट होने का सो क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टीन और नो तुक्का ऑल स्टूडेंट्स आर मार्क एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट आंसर इट इज सोरी आंसर एक्सलेंट एंड इनफैक्ट यू शुड ऑल्सो नो वॉट इज द रेजिमेंट कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ ओके सो दैट वी आर गोइंग टू सी आफ्टर दिस थिंग ओके सो दीज व क्वेश्चन विच विच आई हैव यू नो पोस्टेड एंड इफ इन केस यू लाइक दिस काइंड ऑफ सेशन please guys so many are uh, watching this session please give a like and then only leave this session if you want to revise any other subject if you want to revise the dermatology so you can uh, leave uh, right now after this so we will see explanation of all the questions which i have uh, discussed till now which i have uh, shown you till now but otherwise if you want to revise yourself you can happily uh, leave the session and go back and revise but before leaving please guys do like this video and then only leave and one more thing as i have already told you uh, telegram group is there so if in case i get 20 likes or at least 5 pdf request in the comments whatever is achieved earlier so i will post the soft copy of this in the pdf format in the telegram group okay and uh, yes a little bit of mercy makes the world less cold and more just a little bit of consistent smart hard work makes the subject whatever subject you feel is difficult less confusing and more easy okay this is my modification of uh, the great pope francis words and yes these sessions are available in the description uh, thank you so much for watching this till this point do like the video subscribe if you are not yet subscribed and also share this among your very close friends okay so that they will also gain the advantage myself dr madhuran shinwas friends so now let us start quickly the very very crisp uh, uh, you know one or two points about each of the questions we are going to cover and we are uh, going to conclude this session after all the explanations are completed so this question actually you can say a uh, simple question should have been all of the following are paploscomas disorders except so that is a simple way to ask the question but instead of that the examiner has uh, you know chosen to ask such a lengthy question so what you are able to see is well defined erythematous reddish uh, plaque is present over the elbow with some scaling with some scaling so when all these features are present then we call it as a paploscomas disorder which is our today's actual topic Papulosquamous disorder. So papules and plaques are there, and squamous is nothing but scaling. So in Reiter's disease, in secondary syphilis, and in mycosis fungoides, in all these diseases, we are going to have the papulosquamous lesions. But please remember, in basal cell carcinoma, we do not have any papulosquamous lesions. So option D is the least likely condition which will present in this papulosquamous manner. And one more thing which I want to tell all of you is, in the syphilis, uh, please remember. there there is one uh, a simple funda which you must remember that is secondary syphilis is a type of syphilis in which we are not going to see the vesiculobullous disorders vesiculobullous disorders are absent in secondary syphilis whereas there is one more uh, you know congenital syphilis congenital syphilis and in congenital syphilis we are not going to see the paplosquamous lesions okay so this is something very interesting so secondary syphilis has paplosquamous disorders and does not have vesiculobullous disorders whereas congenital syphilis the children they are going to present with vesiculobullous uh, lesions vesiculobullous lesions they come under vesiculobullous disorder whereas they do not have the paplosquamous lesions so this is something interesting which uh, i just wanted to make sure that you will focus on and this is a jujube question very simple so you are able to see over the flexor aspect so instead of remembering it as flexor remember it as flexor so why i because you all know that already in lichen planus there are some p's p p okay so plane lesions will be there the lesions can be plaques the lesions can be papules the lesions are associated with pruritus the lesions are associated with pruritus and they are uh, what is it they are of the color violaceous color violaceous in color and they are having the polygonal polygonal shape so these are all the p's uh, which you already know but if you want to make it more simpler so instead of flexor aspect just remember flexor 
P for plexer. And what are the other P's? If you remember the lesions, these lichen planus lesions, they will heal with a very, very bad pigmentation. So this is another P. And in the nails, if you remember, lichen planus patients are going to have this pterygium. So this is another P. And there is one more P. Uh, so in the nails itself, we can see even pup tent nails pup tent nails can also be seen this is another p so there are actually so many p's in the lichen planus uh, if you uh, can identify them okay and uh, this is again another question so you can see here the flexor aspect is showing violaceous uh, papules and plugs and lichen planus if it if it is associated with the scalp if it presents over the scalp then there is going to be a scarring alopecia I guess I am coming in the way. So, yeah. So, it is associated with scarring alopecia. Scarring alopecia. And over the lips, uh, the white lacy pattern which you are able to see, this is called as big hamstry. This is called as big hamstry. And over the nails, we are able to see these longitudinal, longitudinal ridges. Ridges are seen. Okay. So, these are all associated with lichen planus. And in the lichen planus, just remember the most appropriate initial treatment which we are going to advise the patients is topical steroids. Topical steroids. And lichen nitidus, uh, please remember it is going to be seen most commonly in the children where clinically it will present with tiny pinhead sized papules mainly over the forearms and also over the penis. And yes, Kobner's phenomenon can be seen in lichen nitidus and actually Kobner's phenomenon is very very important whereby uh, similar morphologic lesions will be produced at distant site whenever there is a trauma. Okay, so that is what is Kobner's phenomenon and most uh, classical examples of conditions which will show Kobner's phenomenon are psoriasis, lichen planus and vitiligo. So, these are the most important skin diseases in which Kobner's phenomenon is seen but also in lichen entities Kobner's phenomenon can be seen. And you must also remember that viral infections, viral infections also can show this Kobner's phenomenon but it is uh, called as pseudo Kobner's phenomenon in the case of viral infection because the new lesions which are similar in the morphology are produced due to auto inoculation they are not called as Kobner's phenomenon but they are called as pseudo it is called as pseudo Kobner's phenomenon and, I, and the examples are viral warts which are caused by human papilloma virus and molluscum contagiosum. Molluscum contagiosum, okay. And mucous membrane lesions are rare in lichen entities. And these are the pinhead sized papules which can be seen over the forearms, over the hands and also over the uh, genital. And uh, you must remember this classical term, claw clutching a ball. So claw, so this is the claw and this is the ball. Okay, so this is what is, uh, uh, you must remember and how how uh, is this observed histopathological. This is histopathological finding in the cases of lichen nitidus. So, you are able to see these lymphocyte, they are seen as a small collection. And you are able to see these, these retail ridges, they are actually forming the claws. So, in uh, this, this is the claw. So, the, the, uh, this is compared to that of the claws and the collection of the lymphocytes is compared to that of a ball. So, it is called as a claw clutching ball appearance which is seen in lichen nitidus. And this is a memory based point which you must know. The psoriasis uh, lesions are going to be well defined erythematous scaly blocks and the scaling will be silvery white scaling. And after treatment what will happen is it was observed in various uh, patients that the surrounding skin the surrounding skin the levels of the pge2 will be reduced the levels of pge2 will be reduced because of which there will be a hypopigmentation which will be seen and this is given the terminology which is called as worn off ring and worn off ring it is seen in psoriasis and uh, basically, this question, uh, you should know about the Petrasis rubra pylorus, which is uh, one of the papillose common disorder, which will present, which will present with salmon red color, dry scaly plaques will be there. 
over the body and yes islands of sparing can be there and in fact you must remember that petrus is uh, pylorus uh, they can land up into erythroderma so initially the lesions uh, will be presenting as nutmeg greater like papules which will start near the uh, face that is cephalic end and slowly slowly this uh, erythema and papular lesions they will become generalized all over the body and it can lead to ultimately erythroderma but there is one uh, classical observation here the erythroderma usually should involve more than 90 percent of body surface area in the patients of petrus pallaris certain areas of sparing that is that is the, the skin will be uh, absolutely normal without any erythema over the most likely over the folds skin folds okay in these patients and this is uh, a classical description which is mentioned in the textbooks islands of sparing whereas option c that is herald patch i hope all of you uh, already know that herald patch <coughs> is also called as a mother patch herald patch is also called as a mother patch and this is seen associated with pityriasis roja pityriasis roja i hope you all know the fancy terms related to pityriasis roja hanging curtain sign christmas tree pattern so if you remember so today is christmas and uh, yes you should remember pityriasis roja which will have this christmas tree pattern of the daughter lesions produced uh, along the langer's lines okay and uh, this is uh, you know what you are able to see is extensor aspect showing white scaly blocks and this is psoriasis this is psoriasis and in psoriasis the clinical test which we can do is auspit sign which we can do is auspit sign auspit sign in which we take a glass lid we will slowly remove the scales and the initially there is going to be a lot of scaling which is compared to that of a candle wax being removed and this is also called as grattage this is also called as grattage okay later on as more and more scales are removed finally we will reach a point where there will be a bulk lease membrane a bulk lease membrane will be reached and if you remove this bulk lease membrane then there is going to be a pinpoint bleeding which can be noted and this pinpoint bleeding when it is observed it is called as auspit sign it is called as auspit sign okay some student answered it as zang smear please remember zang smear we can make use of uh, it as a clinical test bedside test in patients of vesiculobullous disorders in patients of vesiculobullous disorders whereby we can see either acantholysis or we can see multinucleated giant cells okay and uh, i hope you might have seen this mnemonic already so the drugs which can exacerbate psoriasis are painkillers that is ansites l for lithium a for ace inhibitors and also anti malarials anti malarials and b for beta blockers so yes these are the medications which can exacerbate uh, psoriasis and also you must remember that the withdrawal of the steroids withdrawal of the steroids can also exacerbate the psoriasis okay so plab i hope you all know that uh, in the united kingdom so plab uh, is one of the exams which uh, is written to just like usml and uh, yes psoriasis yes so some of the changes histopathological changes which we can see in psoriasis are hyperkeratosis that is thickening of stratum corneum can be seen parakeratosis that is retention of the nucleus in the stratum corneum can be seen and yes the uh, papilla dermal papilla they will become elongated elongated uh, you know dermal papilla and retail edges can be seen and this supra papillary thinning also can be seen supra papillary thinning can be seen and also dilated torches blood vessels can be seen apart from this there is going to be a collection of the neutrophils which can be seen in the stratum corneum and also in the stratus spinosum in psoriasis if stratum corneum has this collection then we are going to call it as munros microapsis and in the same collection it is present in the stratum spinosum then we are going to call it as spongiform pustules of kogoch 
spongy form pustules of cobalt so uh, there is uh, there are few other micro abscesses which you must remember and the most important uh, out of all this is potrier's micro abscess so which is seen in mycosis fungi orders so if you know this simple trick so i will write down the trick here so letter m and p you should remember these two letters so in mycosis fungi orders potrier's micro abscesses are seen and in psoriasis munro's micro abscesses are seen so in m we are going to see p and in p we are going to see m i hope all of you understood this so in psoriasis we can see munro's micro abscess whereas in the case of mycosis fungoides mycosis fungoides mycosis fungoides mf we are going to see potrier's microapsis we are going to see potrier's microapsis so this is very very important it was repeated n number of times so you should definitely know this concept and this is very uh, straightforward memory based question so psoriasis usually affects extensors if you remember extensors Uh, so just opposite of lichen planus so lichen planus affects more commonly flexors so in psoriasis extensors are involved and you can see all the options gluteal cleft lower back elbows and knees these are basically extensor aspect whereas axilla is a flexor aspect so this is the least likely site to be affected and this is a straightforward question so there are many types of psoriasis which i have already told you inverse psoriasis which i discussed previously and in the children usually beta hemolytic streptococcal sore throat tonsillitis it can produce small small rain drop uh, like papules and plaques over the body and this is called as guttate psoriasis okay and pustular psoriasis is also very 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 important concept why because if a psoriatic patient is started with steroids and if the steroids are abruptly stopped then what will happen that patient who was having some normal psoriasis he is he or she will land up into very severe forms of psoriasis which one of which is pustular psoriasis whereby there will be lakes of pustules which will be produced over the entire body or the patient may land up into erythrodermic psoriasis so these two can be seen in steroid withdrawal in psoriatic patients steroid withdrawal okay and one more thing is erythrodermic psoriasis erythrodermic psoriasis very very important okay and drug of choice for psoriatic arthritis so this list you should be well aware it is methotrexate answer here so chronic plaque psoriasis that is psoriasis vulgaris psoriatic arthritis erythrodermic psoriasis in these three types of psoriasis methotrexate is the drug of choice whereas if the patient is coming to us with the pustular psoriasis or if the psoriasis patient is a known hiv patient then the drug of choice will be acetretin but there are certain instances like for example in pertigo hepatiformis which is nothing but pustular psoriasis if it happens in the pregnancy it is given a special name which is called as impetigo hepatiformis okay so in this case or if a pregnant woman is coming with erythrodermic psoriasis erythrodermic psoriasis then we should not use methotrexate or acetretin why should not be use methotrexate or uh, acetretin why because both of these are having one thing in common both of them are teratogenic teratogenic this is a very very important uh, you know side effect adverse effect uh, uh, about these two and in fact both of these are category x medications and i hope all of you also know isotretinoin acetretin they are also isotretinoin is also a category x drug and it should be strictly avoided in all pregnant women okay and this was actually a question of fmg exam also okay so now coming back to this question so in impetigo hepatiformis which is the pustular psoriasis in pregnancy we should not give the teratogenic agents so what are we left out with so in this exceptional cases we are going to prescribe the patient with systemic steroids so admit the patient and start the patients on systemic steroids but uh, there is one more problem here so i hope all of you know that in pregnant women there can be diabetes gestational diabetes or there can be hypertension 
so in such cases again steroids cannot be used steroids uh, cannot be used uh, why because uh, it can again aggravate the uh, diabetic status or blood pressure so we are going to use cyclosporin which is calcineurin inhibitor so cyclosporin can be used in su such uh, circumstances okay that is the second drug of choice in empathic hepatomas or erythrodermic psoriasis in pregnancy so uh, i hope all of you have already uh, got the answer for this question it is empathic hepatomas in which uh, we are going to give steroids and finally gokarman regimen so to end our today's class uh, with some fun so gokarman regimen it is used in psoriasis and i hope all of you know this you know movement which was started during the corona time go corona go corona movement so there was so much of trolling uh, regarding this so everybody was telling go corona and uh, meanwhile corona is very much uh, you know confused whether they are showing it or whether they are motivating the corona virus and uh, corona <laughs> is his wife's name uh, so a person who gave this slogan uh, uh, so some of them are thinking that it is uh, his wife's name corona this song is better than bollywood remake songs so these were all the you know comments which were very funny out of uh, this uh, go corona moment and with this how can you remember that psoriasis go corona is used and uh, it is basically coal tar how to know all this so basically go corona so isn't it so go karman regimen so the first two letters and in the this regimen coal tar coal tar will be combined with the uvb radiation so this is the regimen so with this you can remember go corona go corona go karman regimen coal tar and uvb are used in the patients of psoriasis okay so it is a basically a phototherapy modality and there is one more regimen in gram regimen in gram regimen uh, in which we are going to use dithranol dithranol which is also called as anthralin not anthramali anthralin and we will combine it with uvb uvb this is called as in gram regimen so basically these are uh, obsolete regimens but still sometimes you know if old uh, you know examiners uh, set questions then definitely there is every possibility that this question may be asked that's the reason why you should know uh, about this and i hope all of you have enjoyed uh, uh, this session thoroughly if so please friends give a like to this video and after giving a like then only you leave this session okay and i wish all the students are going to get uh, <coughs> this kind of help from me and you are going to you know pass or you are going to uh, achieve whatever you want to achieve and uh, yes for any kind of help uh, in dermatology you can join my telegram group and yes as i have already told you uh, if five students ask uh, and comment in the pd uh, in the comment section as pdf or in the telegram group also and uh, or if this video gets 20 likes then i will post the soft copy of this uh, pdf version in my uh, telegram group so just join the telegram group you can get the pdf version if these criteria are achieved five students asking and or uh, if 20 likes are achieved for this video uh, you can take uh, the help of the description below the description will be there in that all the links are there so you can uh, watch the inct session which uh, is very important the recall uh, series i have made so you can watch out the fmg and also inct recall uh, you know videos and yes that's it in the session friends so i hope all of you enjoyed if you have enjoyed do not leave this video without giving a like and also do subscribe and also share among your uh, near and dear uh, friends colleagues juniors seniors and also uh, do subscribe yourself and also tell your friends also and uh, this is dr madhuran shinwas okay discussing all these dharma related topics in uh, my youtube channel so i hope all of you enjoyed if you are having any queries suggestions feedbacks comments uh, you can uh, post whatever you have uh, as the doubts in the chat section so i am I, I will be there for 30 more seconds and after which we will call it a day and you can continue with your uh, revisions or uh, whatever it is whatever you are doing you can continue with whatever 
yes thank you so much uh, dr mb arl so you are all uh, you know uh, doctors and you are going to serve the patients uh, during your internships or in the post internship and uh, you should all be healthy so take care of your health which is the most important thing during this corona times so eat healthy and uh, also follow this social distancing mask and sanitization be very careful tell your parents also about this okay thank you so much uh, friends for watching this video till this point uh, so that's it we will wind it up and uh, happy learning dermatology sarvam sri krishna arpanam sarve jana sukhino bhavantu again we'll meet in tomorrow session at 10 o'clock with vesiclobular disorders topic till then happy learning dermatology bye bye